So, this month, the last few, we've been doing a series on, um, in particular, the Masters and Teachers of the Far East. And it is a really a journey. It's a lot of books, a lot of words, a lot of experiences they talk about. But it's really a journey of Christing. And all the lessons will eventually go to that. So, we've learned uh, not, we've learned all sorts of stuff. Um, but if you look at the base of it, it is about being the Christ on earth, being, celebrating your Christ, letting your Christ take the lead. So today, we're going to continue that, and we're going to go into son or servant, or son and servant, however you'd like to think about it. But it's really two distinctly different consciousnesses. So when we look at um, servant, the servant, the word, not servant, to serve, actually comes from in Webster's Dictionary. This actually comes from the Latin word for, or meaning for slave. So we don't necessarily have that connotation towards it today. Um, it has changed and, and gone through its origin and meaning, just like any language does. But we still have, when we hear that word serve, or servant, or service, we still have the connotation of sacrifice. Um, we still have the connotation as something is greater than us. We are putting ourselves as less than what we are serving, who we are serving, what idea we are serving, what group we are serving. We still have that deep within that uh, idea. Um, and we do it. We do it as Christians, we traditionally like to um, say, serve God, be a servant to God, do, you know, that type of thing. You hear it a lot, right? And it still has that tinge of sacrifice and that tinge of do God's will because God wants it, not do God's will because you want it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we are still serving a power greater than ourselves and outside of ourselves. So it's when we say serve, when we say servant, just instantly we automatically get that. Okay, all right. Now if you if you're enlightened and you hear that word service and you automatically change it to I'm going to choose to participate in it, then you're not really serving, right? <laughs> So, and I'll get to that later, but that word has that mm to it, you know? So, when we look at uh, service kind of in our lives, and this is, this is me, you, you might be different, but we, you know our economy is what? I don't know what it is anymore, but it was like 80, 70% service driven, just as the U.S. economy. So, work is a lot of times where we end up serving or taking on that servant role um, and how many times do we to put the task or the boss or even the accomplishment as greater than us because and it may happen um, throughout the day but we all get into that that moment and that uh, project that becomes greater than us becomes more powerful than us and becomes Getting it done to serve someone else is the only reason we're doing it. That's being a servant. That's servicing. You see where you're losing? You're losing yourself a little bit. You're losing your choice and you're losing your participation. So we really want to... We do it in relationships too. Those are the hard ones though. Especially with someone you love. You end up serving them and you're not knowing you're serving them and then all of a sudden you're both mad at each other for no reason. I did what you wanted, but you, I don't know, you just didn't do it right. You know, it's kind of what that energy comes out of it. You guys are good on servant, yeah. that servant energy, that service energy. Um, and we'll explain because, you know, we do hear a lot as Christians, service work, serving God, serving Christ, serving all this stuff. And I'll explain in a minute. So let's look at son. Um, son. So with the word son, and I'm going to say son, but I'm talking to ladies too, daughters. We're all, we're all um, in it together. So with the word son comes expectations. 
So servant has an expectation of duty, sacrifice, um, and then something greater than yourself, right? Those are our three main expectations of servant. As son, our expectations are of an inheritance, even if we look at it as human. When you're a son of your father, you, the world, the other humans expect you to inherit genetics, expect you to inherit looks, maybe habits, little ticks. That's the expectation of son, just in a very basic human level. The, you're also, there's an expectation of inheriting wealth, and there's an expectation of guidance received, being nurtured, and being cared for. That's at a very human level, the word son. So you can see the differences, right? Servant or son. So with this, with us metaphysically, so Christian theology, Jesus is the son of God, right? Metaphysically, we all can accept that we are all sons and daughters of God, correct? So the, the son of God is Christ, and Christ is us in all of us. So we are therefore all sons and daughters of God, correct? So that um, inner Christ, that being in tune with God and being um, aligned with God is your son. We're going to use that going forward. It's your son. We don't always act in our son. We don't always let our Christ lead the way. We don't always supercharge our spirit to take on the day. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. And if we know that we're sons of God, and if we know that the expectation of a son is inheritance, should we not be expectant? To inherit the genetics of God, the look of God, the wealth of God. And should we not be expectant to be nurtured by and taught and provided for? As sons of God, if we can stand forth and say, I am a son of God, we expect it out of our human base like that. And we don't question it. Yeah, he's going to look like his dad. Yeah, he's going to have the same habits as his dad. No wonder apple don't fall too far from the tree. Our apple doesn't fall far from the tree either. Our spirit doesn't fall far from the tree. So we should maybe have that expectation a little bit more, right? So I want to read this from, the, um, from uh, Life and Teachings, Masters of the Far East. And it's not too long, but I'll just read it. The prodigal son who is serving becomes the feasted son. The hireling feeding on the husk becomes the royal the prince of a royal household, the household of his own possibilities. He knows the love of God and understands and, appreci and appropriates the father's gifts. None but a son can receive this gift. No servant, no hireling can enter into the joy of the son's inheritance. The servant is always seeking to attain. The son has already inherited all the father has. When we know we belong to the Father's household and that we are heir to all that the Father has, then we can begin to live as the Father wishes us to live. Behold, now are we sons of God. The Son of Consciousness can causes the fulfillment. The service consciousness causes the lack. We will find every desire of the heart fulfilled by the Father as soon as we act as a part of the Son in thought, word and deed. We will find that the sons of God are free. So how cool is that? Yeah. That's cool. If we stand as a son of God, which means, and it's pr practicality of it is going to differ from person to person, but waking up and meditating, watching your thoughts, changing the structure of your belief system and your thoughts and your spiritual code to always look to God, always let the Christ be the um, decipherer of your experience. If you let the Christ decipher your experience, if you let your connection with God be the one that does the math on what just happened, you won't go to judgment and you won't go to those things that we get stuck in 
which cause us to on a which cause a lot of things, but allow us to become servants without even knowing it. Because we be, we end up we serve we can serve people, we can serve ideas, and we can serve subconsciously we can serve our own belief systems. And that's that's the really tricky part. And I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with you, but. <laughs> That's the next, that's a few levels up. Well, let's work on this level here where we're not serving our boss anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? And the best part about it is when we go, so let's go servant. When we go servant, and it's said in here, servitude, consciousness leads to lack. Because when we're, when we're in that servitude consciousness, we are doing something for us. A power outside of ourself. Therefore, our duties and our accomplishments aren't going to feed us. Does that make sense? So, I know you've all been stuck in a project and and you you're busting butt and you're in that serve serving consciousness, and you get to the end and it's not that fulfilling. Or you get the experience of you. Have you ever said this? It's the same thing every day. No matter what, this job never changes. Because we're serving it. It's, we are being a service at that point. When you're saying that, it doesn't change because you're not leading with the light. So you're not really seeing. You're just in the kind of the rabbit wheel, right? So when I was a little kid, we had this book, and I don't know who wrote it. I guess it was Sesame Street. I think Grover is a Sesame Street, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know the blue guy, blue hairy guy? I love Grover. He's so sweet. Um, so there was this book. And he's in like a class or something, like a preschool class, and he's one of the students and the teacher. And the way it was illustrated, I hope I have this right. I'm doing this straight off memory. I didn't Google it. The way it was illustrated, you know, like a hand comes down and gives him a plate of cookies. And so he's a nice, super nice guy. So he is going to serve these cookies to the rest of the class. So he's literally serving on a tray the rest of the class. And they, he goes around and goes around, and everybody... Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're not like, oh, Grover, blah, blah, blah. It's thank you, thank you, thank you. Taking kind of that take energy. And at the end, guess what? No cookies for Grover. And so Grover starts crying. He's, you know, there are tears all over the page and everything. But you, that's one part of it. You see that, right? You see that, that Grover, Grover's in servitude. So Grover is putting everybody else above himself. Therefore, Grover is in lack at the end. So if there's another tray of cookies that run around and Grover doesn't wake up, he's going to do the same thing. And he's going to be in lack at the end. And he might, be, he might be getting some sort of reward in the middle. You know what I'm saying? We can't judge any experience because it's always good for somebody somehow. And sometimes we need to be in the servant wheel for 10 years to learn something. Do you know what I'm saying? So... But at the end of Grover, and I think this is profound, at the end of the Grover, Grover doesn't have his cookie, he's crying, and then, and then in my head it's illustrated this way, so Sesame Street if it's not, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There's a hand that comes out of the corner of the page and has a cookie for Grover. So we have all been in that where we have done, 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 done for other people and moms, I know you guys know this because you guys do an awesome job. Done for other people, but we're in that service mode and we don't have anything for ourselves. But our father, no matter what, still recognizes us as a son. And that hand comes down with the cookie. <laughs> and then at that point, at that, that point we have a choice. Do we uh, keep needing the handouts when we're down the next time? Or do we... We learn how to change our consciousness. Because the, the best thing about, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but the, um, the best thing about these is the action doesn't matter. The action doesn't matter. The consciousness you do the action in, the intent you set forth before the action is done matters. We can do anything as a servant, and we can do anything as a son. In, in work, we see this a lot. I keep bringing it up. But in work, we, um, so I work in uh, 
it's we produce product, but it's also very service um, related, and um, we have a protocol where we want great surveys at the end of the process, right? So our company is very, very um, insistent on doing what it takes in order to make people happy. So we, it's like one of our slogans is happy people is, is the end of it. So you can look at it two ways and there's many people in my company that, do, that look at it both ways. I choose to be happy at my job. I choose to love going into my work. Therefore, I want my people to be happy. And therefore, I will do what it takes to do that. If it means I have to stay till nine o'clock and miss something, I'm choosing to do that because I, my intention is to be happy at work and love my job. And a part of that is having happy people. And I don't want to look, I don't want to have to duck inside a house or get in my truck when somebody's walking down the street because they're unhappy. I want win-win at work all the time. I'm not saying there's not other portions of my job where I'm totally <laughs> getting that servant thing, <laughs> kicking the dog, you know, oh, come on. But that's um, the two levels of consciousness we can go into. And we can do any action in it. It doesn't matter. The action is not the importance. It's the intention and that consciousness. So um, the best is when you stand. So we, we, I want to talk about the whole a little bit because we talk about serving the whole, right? When you stand in your son and really stand in your son, letting, letting your Christ take the lead, letting your inner Christ, your spirit, be forefront in your actions. Setting intention beforehand catching yourself in the middle, catching your thoughts, releasing your judgments, not taking everybody, not trying to judge everybody. That, those are the very basics of it. Release your judgments, filter your thoughts, and meditate before you go out or set your intention. That's what that meditate. That's why we say in the morning, if you meditate in the morning, I don't care what you think about meditation, it at least sets an intention for the day. And every business guru would tell you to do that. You know, you can set that intention for the day and therefore those, those experiences of the day are colored by it. So we want to set our son, our Christ out front at the beginning of the day. So our experiences throughout the day are colored by our Christ and not colored by our servitude or our nature to make somebody else happy above else, above us, above all else. I want to make so-and-so happy above all else when that's really not going to work because you're giving them something they may, may or may not want, and it's from you, and it's through sacrifice, so it's not going to be sustainable. It's a piece of white bread when really you need a smoothie with seven superfoods in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'll fill them up for a day, but it won't keep them going forever. So you're really not serving them that well. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but we talk about the whole. We talk about serving the whole. Um, when you're in your son, um, you don't serve the whole. You don't serve the whole. You don't do that. You harmonize with the whole. You can still be compassionate, but you're not in service to the whole. You are uplifting the whole. You are changing the vibration of the whole when you're standing in your son. And it's the cliche you hear when you're in seventh grade. You can... Everybody's heard it. You, you know when you see somebody walk into the room and change it like that. They're standing. They came to that door with their son shining bright, S-O-N. And we, so when we do that, when we think, because I want to say that because we talk about serving the whole a lot here. When we hear that, we harmonize with the whole. We uplift the whole. We change the whole when we are in our son. When we serve the whole in our servant, we perpetuate what is about the whole. We don't change the whole. We keep the whole going the way it's always been going. That's why it, as a whole, we got a lot going on. That's why sometimes it's really hard and it takes a long time because we come at it as a service, as a sacrifice. A lot of our historical leaders have looked at their duty as I will sacrifice myself for the good of the whole. 
Na. Na. Stand in your son and change the hole. Stand in your son and lift the hole. That's the way to do it. And then here's my favorite one. My favorite one is you cannot serve God. I got a good reaction. I was looking for that. <laughs> you, were looking for it. you cannot serve God. I'll tell you why. When you're aligned and your Christ is leading the way and you are um, doing God's will, participatory, and you're standing in your son, you are not serving God. You are an extension of God. You are God. God is flowing through you. It's not a service. It's an arm. It's an expression. It's a vibration. You are extending God, and you are spreading God into the world. It's not a service. It's an extension of God. Because we need to, to really, you kind of have to lose the idea of God on a cloud throwing out commands and, and trying to organize us in a certain way where he sees fit. You, ha you have to kind of buy into the idea of God is so much greater than we can ever know and we can ever experience through our human body because it's so much different. And our Christ is, is so powerful when we use it and we allow that to come. Because we are literally, the Christ is the Son of God. We have the Christ within us. We are using the Son of God. We are an extension of God into the world that we live in. That's why standing in your Son radiates out and uplifts the whole. Because God is there. God is you. You are God. And it's awesome. And so I really want to say, when you see that serve God... Because we're a Christian, we're metaphysical, it's a, it's a mix, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't lessen anything that we have in our history, it doesn't lessen the words that we've heard our entire lives. Our thoughts change what we see and what we read and how we take it. If we change our thoughts to son first, servant never, we will read the same exact words in a totally different way. We will hear the same exact phrases in a totally different way, and it won't take us to that lack, and it won't take us to that sacrifice, and it won't take us to that less than. And we can stand proud, tall, not stand with our shoulders slumped over. What do you want me to do next? I love serving you, God. You know what I'm saying? God doesn't want our service. If you really think about it, and that might be controversial, I'll tell you this. So, you know, it's kind of an old school way to do it. When a lot of times people still use it and it is what it is. When you go um, to a wedding, sometimes they use that, uh, the words, the wife serve the man, the wife serve the husband, that type of thing. God doesn't want our service. I don't know. I don't know about you ladies. You probably don't want that right at your uh, wedding. <laughs> God doesn't want our service. God wants us to participate with God. God wants us to choose to use our Christ to experience his world. God wants us to uplift the whole, not sacrifice for the whole. Does that make sense? When we look at service as the service that we're as a servant, as a slave, if we track it back, God doesn't want that. God wants us we are God. God wants us to be an extension, not to do his will and bidding at the drop of a hat. And we tend to kind of look at it that way a little bit. I think I've harped on it enough. <laughs> Another cool thing, um, we taught y'all were here for the ought and not. So real quick rundown. So most uh, God is ought. God is ought. Truth, God, absolute truth is God. God is, ought is eternal. Ought is never going to go away. Ought is, ought is. 
not is temporary. We are not, our bodies are not, our spirits are hot, right? Our bodies are going to die. We're going to, and if we don't die, we're going to figure out another way to get out of them. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, the world around us is, is not. It's all temporary. It's all going to go. It's all going to change. So the sun is ought. The sun is on. That Christ light within you that's going to, that's on. That's part of your spirit. The servant in you, the servant you are sometimes is not. It's an, it, it may always be around. It may always be something you're going to do and work with. But it's always going to end. It's always temporary. The sun doesn't go anywhere. We just choose whether to use it or not. And we all do it. And I'm right there with you guys. It's... It is interesting to try to live with your son every step of every day. It's an interesting task to take on. But as long as we choose to take it on as a participant with God, instead of, I take it on because David told me to. Don't do that. I don't want you serving me. I don't want you serving in a quest. So, the, I got a cool thing and then we'll, we'll go within. Um, yesterday we were building the shed. And... Uh, we were building the shed. I'm, I was up on the roof, and then uh, Gordon was here, and Patrick and Gordon were kind of just um, drinking some water, hanging out while I was working really hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Patrick was on the roof with me, too. Uh, but it, it was just a passing conversation. It was nothing, no judgment from either one of them. And Patrick goes, he said something. They were, hey, man, how's it going? Beautiful day, you know. Great weather, blah, blah, blah. And then Patrick said something about, yeah, not, not too bad for a little service work today. And Gordon said, he didn't, he didn't say, no, it's not service work. He said, it's a labor of love. Right. Think about those. Yeah. Let's let our service, our action of service, be a labor of love. And let's let our son take the lead. Your, I mean, your life will change. Your life will change and you will be happy, and you will be taken care of, taught, guided, and provided for the whole way. You won't go to that lie. Good? All right, let's meditate. Put your feet on the floor, get comfy. Take a breath in. I want you to ask your higher self to descend fully into your body, where you're at right now on your chair. And I want you to ask that that higher self, that connection with spirit, charge your spirit and spark your inner Christ. However it looks, whatever you have pictured for your inner Christ, let it be charged by this connection with the divine. And let it vibrate and uplift your whole, your whole, as a body, as a mind, as a spirit. Allow that vibration to lift you. You should be, you might see colors, you may be getting lighter, your head may be tilting back. Allow it to fill you. Where you're at right now, you don't have to go anywhere. Now I want you to call forth your inner guidance to stand. And I want you to call forth your connection with your divine. And really get ready to open your eyes of your spirit and open your soul We're going to ask those eyes of our spirit to show us an area, an idea, a person where we are servant in our lives right now, where we're sitting right now. God, what are we servant to? And I want you to call it for us so you can visualize it. It may be words, maybe a person. And just allow it to come forth freely, 
No judgment to yourself, to the other person. Then I want you to call forth the column of light over you, not over that servitude, over you. And allow the Christ and God to descend into your body, where you're sitting now. Call forth your son to stand forth. And I want you to take that energy from the, the column coming down, and I want you to through your Christ, through your Son, through your body, visualize that energy going out to your service, to your servant, to your experience where you're in servitude. And I want you to filter it with your Son. Let your Son charge the service. Allow that energy from God down and through your Christ, out you, out of you, charge that service. God, we stand forth and we love our life. We stand forth as with our Christ shining, and we love the experience to allow our sun to flow. And in this, we charge this servants with our Son, with our Christ. Therefore, it is no longer service. It is participation with you. Now, allow your service to go. Charge with that Son. It can go. It can stay. Just don't be connected to it. Disconnect from it. However you need to do that. We don't want to carry it around. But we've charged it with our son. So the next time we go back to it, it's not going to be service. It's going to be an experience with God. God, we will stand forth with our sun shining and walk with each other in a harmonious and uplifting vibration. And we are grateful for these opportunities to grow spiritually and to uplift the whole. So it is. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. So, hope it made sense. I hope you uh, got something good for your service. And uh, It's cool when you get it and you didn't know it. That, those are the cool ones. Um, a lot of times you, you get those and you're like, no, 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 that's not right. Get out of here. But um, be a son. Be a son. Stand in your son. Let your son, S-O-E, and shine. Don't be a servant. Nobody needs it. Thank you.